How to throw a killer punch. The first thing you need to know how to do is to make a proper fist. You take your hand, you roll your fingers down tightly, and you wrap your thumb around the outside. You want to hit the target with these first two knuckles here because they're strongest. You don't want to have any space in your fist because when you hit something harder, it's going to collapse your hand. That'll either hurt your hand or it'll take power out of the punch. You want to make sure that when you hit, your fist is really hard like a rock. And you could test it out just by hitting yourself in the palm. If your fingers move, if they collapse, you haven't made it tightly enough. So what are the best targets on a guy to punch him? Well, one of the best ways to really rock a guy is to hit him in the face. You can think about our head like a computer. And if you smack a computer, everything goes a little hazy for a minute. That's what happens when you get punched. You can also knock a guy out. If you hit a guy in the limbs or in the stomach or somewhere else, it may hurt him, but it doesn't rock him to the core the same way it does with a good shot to the head. But you have to be really careful where you punch someone because you can damage your hand. The softest targets on a guy's face are his nose, his jaw, maybe his eye socket, maybe his ear. And the worst places to hit him would be anywhere on the top of his skull or the back. Our skull is like a helmet and it's meant to protect our brain. That means that everything from maybe your forehead all the way back is really hard. If you punch a guy and he ducks down and you clock him in the top of the head, it's like punching a bowling ball. It's really easy to bust your fingers. That's why in boxing and MMA and all other types of combat sports like that, competitors wear gloves. It's not to protect the guy getting hit. It's to protect the person punching. If you throw a punch and the guy ducks and you hit a hard part of his skull, you will bust your hands. And those types of injuries usually stay with you for the rest of your life. So when you do punch a guy, it's great to punch him in the nose. It's great to punch him in the jaw. It's great to come up under his jaw with an uppercut. But you really got to be selective. You can't just swing wildly and hope you hit something because there's a good chance you're going to hurt your hands. That's why a lot of martial arts styles like Krav Maga actually teach you to use palm heels to the face rather than closed fists because you can hit the guy just as hard and you won't injure your hands at all. I've found personally that each kind of strike has its own advantages. If you're in really close with a guy in a self-defense situation and maybe your hands are open like this in a defensive stance, it's really easy to palm heel the guy. You don't have to clench your fist. You don't have to wind up. It just flows really nicely from wherever you are. But I've also found that if I'm farther away from a guy, it's harder to reach him with a palm heel because my arm ends here with a palm heel, but it goes this much farther with a fist, right? That's another six or seven inches that can really be decisive in bashing his face in. So it's good to know that there are two ways to do it. But the most important thing to know is that you can hurt your hands on a guy's head if you hit him in the wrong place. But as long as you aim for his nose or his jaw or maybe his eye socket and you focus on hitting with these first two knuckles, you should be okay. But just know that there's always a chance you can injure yourself. So if you want to play it safer, you might want to use a palm heel instead. One of the keys to remember when punching someone is that even though you want your fist to be rock hard at the moment of impact, before you hit the guy, you want to stay as loose and relaxed as possible. The problem is that if you tense up like the Hulk, you won't have any speed, right? That hinders your ability to move quickly because your muscles are tight. You want to stay really loose and relaxed and throw that punch out as quickly as you can. And only at the last second do you want to tighten all your muscles and tighten your fist when it hits the guy. And then you immediately loosen it when you retract your hand. So a killer punch has more the feeling of a whip. You're loose and relaxed, you throw it out there, and at the last second you tighten your fist and then you bring it right back, right? And you can practice doing that, just like that. Boom, 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 boom. Um, you can even do it with your hands open for a while and just at the last second, you close it. This takes a little bit of practice because if you've never really punched before, the tendency is to clinch all your muscles and be really tight and hit something and go, Ugh! But to get better, you really need to learn to relax, relax all your muscles and only tighten at the very end. The other thing you want to do with your punches is focus on your breathing. The rule of thumb is that anytime you strike, you want to exhale. So you might've heard a lot of karate guys, whenever they throw a punch, they ki-eye really loudly. They go, hey, hey. You've probably seen that in Cobra Kai. The reason they do that is for two things. First, when you ki-eye loudly, it's meant to intimidate your opponent. You hear this loud noise and it's very shocking to you. 
But the real reason they do that, or the better reason they do that, is it helps control your breathing. When you get into a fight, the tendency is to hold your breath. You get scared or nervous and you just start swinging and you're not breathing. And that means you get winded right away. But you need to keep breathing in order to stay in the fight. Every time I strike, I breathe out with this quick puff of air. And that forces me immediately to breathe in afterwards. So by forcing myself to exhale with each punch, I'm reminding myself to keep breathing in and out, in and out. And that'll make me last in a fight a lot longer. Probably the most important lesson in learning how to throw a killer punch is to learn how to put your entire body weight behind it. What do I mean by that? The strength of your arm is very small compared to the strength of your entire body, right? Even if you just look at the mass, my arm weighs about 10 pounds, but my whole body weighs almost 200 pounds. If I'm going to hit a guy in the face, I have a choice of putting 10 pounds behind it or almost 200 pounds behind it. Which should I do? It's obvious you want to hit the guy with as much body weight as you can. So how do you do that? So the key is that you want to start every punch from your feet and you want to work the way up your body. So if I'm facing you here and say I'm going to punch you with my right cross here, I push off my rear foot, right? I push off my heel so my heel comes off the ground. There are some karate styles that encourage people to keep their heel on the ground and just throw with their hip but boxers and, and most practitioners actually take their heel off the ground. So I push off my heel, so I push off my heel and I rotate my hips, right? So now I'm starting to turn my whole body and that causes my shoulders to get into the punch now and my back muscles. So instead of just hitting a guy with the strength of my arm like this, I'm pushing off my leg, I'm rotating my hips, I'm turning my shoulder, I'm getting my back muscles involved and only at the very end do I throw my fist out like that. So again, it's like a whip and that's why I have to have all these muscles relaxed because if they're tight, it'll slow everything down. So from here, I come out nice and smooth, nice and relaxed. And if I speed it up, I'm using all my body weight and I can actually feel that I'm pushing off the ground and I'm using the leverage of the earth to push right into the guy like that. If I just use my arm, I wouldn't have any leverage, but I'm low, my knees are bent, I'm pushing off the earth, twisting my body, and pushing him as hard as I can. That's using my whole body weight. You'll also notice that when I throw these punches, I rotate my fist. You don't have to do this. There are some people who like to punch vertically like that, and it can be very effective. But most martial arts practitioners and a lot of boxers they tend to rotate at the end. It's another way of ensuring that your shoulder muscles are really getting behind that punch. Sometimes if you just throw vertically, you won't get your full shoulder into it. But when you rotate, you can see how you get that extra bit of strength into it. I just do it naturally. There will be times, especially if you're in close with the guy, where you can't rotate. It doesn't make sense, there's no room. So if I were in this close to a guy, boom. It's a vertical punch. There's no time to rotate. I don't need it. Same with uh, my left hand, right? It would go right to his face. I wouldn't try to force a rotation that doesn't make sense. So from here, I can go straight to his face. But if I were a little farther away, it gives me great extra reach and it really makes sure that I'm putting my hips and my shoulders into the punch. Here's one pro tip you should know. You'll get a lot more power and a lot more protection if you keep your elbows in. When I punch, I don't want my elbow to come out like that because this is kind of weak compared to this. The closer your elbows are to your body, the more strength you have behind it. So throwing out shots like that with my elbows to the outside is not nearly as powerful as keeping my elbows tight to my body like that, right? And it also ensures that I'm really using my hips. If I go like that, I might forget to throw my hips into it. But by keeping my elbows in, I really make sure I'm twisting my whole body. I can get back here to show you. You see how I'm really twisting my whole body. And when you practice this at home, you should really exaggerate these movements. You won't be able to do this in a real fight, right? You'll cheat everything. But when you practice it, you really want to over-exaggerate all these movements to make them part of your muscle memory. Really exaggerate that twist with your hips, with your knees, with your shoulders, with the rotation of your hands. 
And the other reason you want to keep your elbows in is because against a more advanced fighter, if your elbows are out or high, it makes it easier for someone to rush in and tackle you. It also makes it easier for someone to come in and hit you with like a liver shot or hit you in the solar plexus. But by keeping your elbows in, they're offering more protection, right? You're, you're protecting your ribs, you're protecting your heart, all those vital organs. Another great place to punch someone is in the solar plexus, which is right about here. It's kind of midway between my breastbone and my belly button. Right in the middle in no man's land, below the ribs. It's a very sensitive area with a lot of nerves. And if you whack some guy right in the solar plexus, it'll drop him. Your whole body goes into spasms, you lose your breath, everything goes haywire. It's not always the easiest shot to hit if a guy's got a lot of belly fat or if he's wearing a lot of clothing, but it's just good to know that if his face isn't available or you don't want to injure your hands, it's a much safer bet to hit him right there. The other punch I should mention that gets a lot of attention in boxing matches and MMA matches is the liver shot. And everyone has one liver and it's on your right hand side. It sticks out just below the bottom of your rib cage. So if you feel your own body on the right side, right, you've got your rib cage. Well, sticking out a little bit below that is this giant mass of an organ called the liver. It's very sensitive and it's partly exposed. So if you come up and really whack a guy right below the rib cage on his right side and you, you hit that liver, it'll drop him. He'll go down in pain. So if I'm facing a guy, his liver is on the right side. So that means I would probably punch him with my left hand. Maybe he takes a swing at me with his left and I go under his hook and then I come up and I hit him, boom, right in the liver. The last thing I'll say about throwing a killer punch is don't forget to have a good defense. When you throw a punch, that's when you're most vulnerable to getting hit yourself. So you begin by standing in a good fighter position, right? I've got one foot forward, one foot back. My body is angled, so my groin isn't exposed to a kick. I'm at an angle and I'm raising my shoulders and I'm dropping my chin to protect my vital organs, which is my face and my chin. If I'm like this and a guy throws a punch at me and I just look down, He's going to bash his fingers against the top of my head and he's going to break his fingers. I might get a bruise, but he's going to break his hand, which is worse. So I want to protect my vital organs, which is my face and my chin, by hiding them behind my fists and within my shoulders. When I throw a punch, I want to throw it right at the target and then bring it right back to where it was. A lot of us, what we do, we develop bad habits. We throw a punch and we drop it, right? We throw a punch and we drop it. We're focused so much on hitting with power that we drop it afterwards. And that makes us incredibly exposed to getting hit right after that. So you really want to practice throwing it out and coming back, throwing it out and back, out and back, out and back. And when you think about having defense while you're striking, you'll also remember to keep your elbows in. I do the same thing too. When I'm throwing punches, sometimes if I'm forgetful, my elbows will start going outside. And that makes me vulnerable to either getting tackled in a takedown or getting hit with a body shot. Keep your elbows in, keep your hands up, punch, come right back to where it was, just like that. This is stuff you can shadow box every day. It's great practice and it should feel natural. Just doing this, very smooth. I'm not tensing my muscles, right? Everything's very relaxed and smooth. So again, the keys to throwing a killer punch, make a proper fist, stay relaxed until the moment of impact, know what targets you're hitting, put your full body weight behind it, and keep a really good defense even when you're striking. I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna post a lot more videos like this. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want more.